Hi guys. <laughs> Hopefully I'm going to be able to get through this without my dogs barking because they do think I'm talking to someone. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> my, one of my dogs has come to say hello. <laughs> oh, they're all coming over now. Okay. Um, but anyway, I just wanted, because I've done so much research on kissing spines. Um, hi, sweetheart. I just wanted to just maybe talk about kissing spines a little bit and maybe what the causes are um, or what things can exacerbate it. Um, so I thought I would start off by defining what kissing spines actually is because I found a very, very good um, definition from um, VetMed. I'll post a, a, a link in the description. Um, but I'm just going to read it out. So the overriding or impinging dorsal spinous processes or kissing spines occur when vertebrae in the spine are too close together rather than being spaced apart as in a healthy spine. This results in touching or overlapping of two or more of the bony projections at the top of each vertebrae. In some horses, this can cause consistent low-grade pain, but many horses do not exhibit any clinical signs. And I just think that is um, such an important thing because a lot of um, horses can have pathology along their back, but they don't actually show any behavioural signs. Um, so what are the clinical signs of kissing spines? So in Arthur's case, they're extremely subtle. I don't think I would have actually found the kissing spines, if I'm honest, if he hadn't fractured his splint bone. So, um, so yeah, they can be as subtle as just poor performance, which is also something that I struggled with, with, with Arthur, which never got better with strength training, really. Um, he did do improvements, but there was always something in the back of my mind that said, I just feel like something's not right. Um, and then decreased range of motion um, when asked to flex or extend the back. And that's something that I've struggled with with Arthur as well. Um, but then it can go all the way to um, a pain reaction. So horses can um, book or difficulty cantering, taking the right, the wrong lead. Um, and then just be really reactive to the back. So maybe put a when you put a saddle on the horse, the horse um, reacts violently. Anyway, the first one I wanted to talk about was the hereditary aspect of kissing spines. So I found a really interesting article um, for some research that's just been, I think it was going on um, in 2020, um, but it was published, I think, in 2020, just the beginning of this year. Um, so new research has actually showed that there's um, at least two chromosomes. So they pointed out 16 and 25 of the equine genome that appear to have regions that affect uh, the severity of kissing spines. And this is in warm bloods, um, in thoroughbreds and stock horses. Um, I will, again, post this um this article, it's so it's very interesting. I really do suggest to read it. Um, I'll post it in the description. Um, so it's just food for thought, and I know that this goes around on groups um, on social media quite a lot. Um, and there was a few people who mentioned that they'd had um, just due to bad experiences when they've come to look for another horse again. Um, they've. So there's a lot of people um, who have been commenting and just through bad experiences, I guess, they've um, gone through five stage retins and they've decided to have the horse's back x-rayed. And um, there was one person I spoke to um, and she shared me some x-rays and it was a three-year-old unbacked horse um, and it had kissing spines and it appeared to be quite bad kissing spines. Um but then there's people who've had falls and they've just gone through um, checking their horse out before um, starting the, the breaking process and they have kissing spines. Um, so obviously there's got to be other factors at play for these horses to, to have kissing spines but have had no interaction with a rider yet or training. 
Um, confirmation, I also think, um, comes into the hereditary aspects. Um, so if a horse is short-backed, uh, you're going to get crowding of the, um, of the processes. Um, and then if your horse is croup high or has um, a long back, this is also a problem. And I did learn in this article that um, horse's height has a, um, a significant impact on kissing spines as well. So I didn't really appreciate that as a horse gets bigger, obviously the forces um, on the spine um, do get larger. Um, but the ligaments and all the soft tissue doesn't get equally stronger. Um, I didn't really appreciate that um, in terms of the bigger horse. And then the next one is maturity. Uh, so I think a lot of people have seen this image going around on social media quite a lot. Um, so you can see that the skeletal development um, of a, a horse continues from birth right up until the age of six. Um, but then you see, well, and then the back is the last thing to um, to develop, to, to fuse. Um, and it just really makes you think, because in the equestrian industry, um, horses are, are broken in at the age of three in general. They're generally jumped at the age of four. So horses are asked to do quite a lot when they're actually still um, they're actually still growing. Um, I think one of the main problems um, is the fact that horses, I guess um, it, it explains it in this article um, from Equine Inc, that horses look mature, but they're not mature inside. So in order to give a horse a best chance of leading a, a healthy, a long and healthy life, we need to give them time to mature from the inside as well as the out. Um, but horses don't get given that chance. Um, so this is, to me, is such a massive, um, a massive contributor of kissing spines. The fact that horses are broken in and ridden way too early. But that's my personal opinion. People will probably disagree with me, but that's my personal opinion. Um, I just think that horses just need time to be horses do do plenty of in hand work, but why do we have to sit on them at three three four year old um but that that's just my my personal opinion on it. I do realize that I'm talking about um the ride the rider um in this um in this part, but for me it is specifically about maturity so I just think that horses are so fragile when they're still growing and their bones are still, um, their growth plates are still fusing. Um, and I just think that a horse needs time. And then another big one for me is saddle fit. <laughs> um, so obviously, just like us, we do have automatic reflex points. So if somebody prods us, we will move away kind of thing. Um, so if your horse's saddle doesn't fit it, particularly along the channel, so I think it's um it's a big thing where channels generally get narrower towards the back of the of the horse's back. I I'll post one picture of um of the the saddle that I rode Arthur in for a year and a half. Um, obviously, I, I used a registered saddle fitter and I had him out every six months. So I felt like I'd done my job. Um, but obviously, the fitter didn't do his. Um, but yeah, so the if the saddle sits on the horse's spine, the horse is going to be tense the whole time. So the you, it doesn't matter if, you know, you're, you're Charlotte Dujardin, you're... <laughs> You're not gonna um no matter how much of a good rider you are, you're not gonna make you're not gonna encourage your horse to work over the back because the saddle's gonna block it. Um and that is another significant factor, I think. So um the hereditary aspect I think is really important. 
Um, the maturity aspect is really important. And I do think that needs to change in the industry. Um, and then saddle fit is is also a really important factor. And another one, which I think is really, really important, but for some reason, I just couldn't find any articles. I couldn't find any research on it, which I find astounding. But I think I, I want to mention it because um, I think we have a bit of an um, epidemic of um, something called caudal heel failure. Um, so horses basically with collapsed heels and long toes. Um, but yeah, hoof balance. <laughs> so I literally can't find anything on this, um, on, on this that would link to kissing spines, which I find crazy because I think it's, um, a lot of it is common knowledge now that if your horse's, um, hooves aren't balanced, so if the bones aren't in alignment, they then cause, um, issues further up the body. So, um, the tendons, the muscles would be strained, um, I think there is a lot about um, SI strain um, on a horse, but then this is all linked to the back as well. So if, if your horse is struggling to step under itself or um, struggling to be engaged because its hoof balance is incorrect and it's caused soreness elsewhere, it's not, it's not going to work over the back either. Um, so yeah, I think that is such an important thing, but for some reason I just can't find anything on it. For anybody interested in um, hoof balance, I highly suggest um, the Lowly Farrier on Facebook. Um, he provides so many interesting, um, uh, just so many interesting um, discussions and, and, and imagery and things like that, which uh, I find really, really interesting. Uh, another thing to point out is the fact of is there anything secondary that is causing the kissing spine? So I personally think that this is a chicken or the egg situation. <laughs> what came first? <laughs> um, it's my personal opinion that kissing spines is generally the first thing. Um, and then the other things come, come secondary after the horse has spent so much time compensating. But... I could be wrong, but that's just my personal opinion based on my experiences with Arthur because I think he's had kissing spines from day one, um, which is why I've experienced things that I have. Um, but that's just my personal um, opinion. But uh, horses can generally have stifle issues, SI issues, um, hock issues, uh, I think those are commonly associated with kissing spines. So it's always important um, before opting for surgery or anything like that, just to make sure that there aren't any other significant issues which are causing a problem. Because obviously when you're wanting to go through the rehab process, you want to make sure that you're doing it as accurately as possible. I suppose it's so soul destroying for people who think that their horse has just has kissing spines, goes through the operation goes through the injections, goes through rehab, and then a year later, maybe a suspense. Maybe they find out their their ha horse has suspensory problems. It must be so soul destroying. Um, I totally feel for those people, and I really hope I'm not going to be one of them. But um, hopefully the bone scan will will give me um the final part of the jigsaw kind of thing, um, and then I can go from there with a plan. Uh, but yeah, so any secondary issues. And then this list is not exhaustive. I just think that these are um, the, the key areas to consider with kissing spines. Um, every horse is obviously going to be different. Um, but then lastly, I think rider influence comes into play. <laughs> um, because without everything um, we've talked about being... Um, being correct um for the horse you know they're never gonna they're never gonna work properly um doesn't matter who you are as a rider doesn't matter how good you are a horse is not gonna is not gonna work correctly if things like um yeah if they do have a little bit of kissing spines if they have an incorrectly fitted saddle if their hoof balance is incorrect um 
they're just not gonna you need a sound foundation for a horse to be able to work properly it's just like human athletes um but a good example is my gray if i'm honest my gray so uh, my husband hates dressage i think he did it for a little while um doing some eventing um with jack um so all he's done really with him is cross country so just cross country hacking cross country hacking that's all he's done and uh, um jackson doesn't have a bad back um <laughs> so yeah you'd think that i think if if any if any horse was going to end up having a a back problem it would be jack because my husband hasn't done anything that professionals say in terms of the 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 ridden aspects of making sure that your horse has got a strong back just obviously jackson um just has a good back and that, and that's the be all and end all of it i think there is a there is a hereditary um the hereditary aspect is one of the most important things but that's just my my personal opinion um i appreciate that other people will think very differently there is obviously um another one um which is if your horse has any health conditions i guess so i'm part of the ps a pssm group and i've noticed that um a significant amount of people are struggling with kissing spines um and there's quite a few that i've noticed have kissing spines and stifle abnormalities but are also have pssm too um, and it's generally the same um, variant what um, Arthur tested positive for. So that's obviously something that I'm considering. Um, ha is this linked? Um, and I'm I'm assuming that when PSSM becomes um, a bit more in the uh, a bit more in the public eye, uh, this will get researched um, eventually. But all of these things just take time. But yeah, this. This is just um, something else which I'm, which I consider with Arthur. Um, as I said, kissing spines is is so much more complicating than whether you're riding your horse correctly or not. But I did find, um, and again, I, I will share all of these um, links that I've taken all this information from in my description. And I really do suggest uh, reading some of them because they they are so interesting um to try and learn more about this this disease especially if your own horse has it um but i did find something from an article which i thought concluded my vlog really well so i will just read it out because i realize that i'm a bit naff to <laughs> to talk sometimes <laughs> so it's tempting to blame kissing spines spine problems on the weight of a rider especially in young horses or those that are not in good physical condition however researchers studying the skeletons of long extinct horses have found evidence of kissing spines in these animals so while weight carrying does reposition the shape of the sp spine to some extent not all problems with kissing spines are related to the presence of a rider I just thought it was a really good paragraph um, to sum up what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that what a rider does is important. I just think that there's just too much stigma with kissing spines um, and the rider influence when I just think if a horse is set up for failure by genetics, by um, hoof balance, um, by saddle fit, or just by the fact that they've been broken in and ridden away way too early um if the ho yeah if the horse has basically been set up for failure it just doesn't matter what a rider tries to do it's it's not gonna work um i just think kissing spines is just such so much more complicated than what what people give it credit for um obviously i do think um rehab type work keeps these things at bay um because i in 2019 so i'd only had arthur for about a year and a half i think i didn't have him that long um but in 2019 
um, he was diagnosed with back pain, but because his saddle was grotesquely, um, uh, well, because the channel was so grotesquely narrow, um, the we just put it down to that. But he was sore in the exact same area that he had kissing spines, so he clearly did have kissing spines at that point in time. Um, but he did respond really, really well to the the rehab work. So just um, I did use the Pessoa. Um, I obviously used it on the 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 loosest settings. It just stopped him from putting his head right up, I guess. And then I was able to just lunge him without without anything. Um, and he would lower his head and step underneath himself. Um, so he responded really well to that. So I had I went through loads of saddles. Um, it was it's been an absolute nightmare. It really has. Um, but he yeah he responded really well to that. And to be honest, anybody looking at him in twenty twenty would probably think I cued the kissing spines. But obviously I didn't because he still has it. Um, so I do think that rehab is the the the. Do you know what? I'm not even going to call it rehab. It's just going to have to be a way of life. Um, it's a bit like I have a medical condition and I have to do things every um, every day to be able to cater to my medical condition. It'll never change, um, but it keeps my problems at bay. And it's the same for a kissing spine horse. So I don't really think it's a rehab. It's just going to become a way of life. Um, so I think it's really important to do your stretches, to do your, your long and low lunging. I, I think hacking is so important as well. Anyway, I'm rambling on now. I hope this has been um, helpful and I hope that everybody will um, take a look at the articles that I've mentioned in this um, vlog. Um, especially anybody who does have Kiss and Spines horses. <clears throat> I'm also very sorry. I know I look like crap. <laughs> I'm just watching these videos back and I just think, oh my God, I look a mess. But it is what it is. I'm very tired. <laughs> um, but I do hope it's been helpful. Um, I just think that, yeah, as I've said before, I just think there's too much stigma um, of the rider for linked to kissing spines when I just think it's so much more complicated than that. Um, and I'm not just saying that because obviously my horse has kissing spines. Um, I try to own the things that I do wrong. <laughs> um, but I just think that he's always had kissing spines. So until next time, um, bone scan is next Tuesday. And I just really, really can't wait um, to get that done. Arthur's. Um, hooves are getting really long and I really really want the farrier to come it's just I won't pay I think it costs quite a lot of money for his um, wedge pads and I really don't want to have to spend that a week before he has the bone scan then for the vets to take them off um, but I'm getting really itchy feet over looking at his feet <laughs> um, but it is what it is um, I still haven't got the blood results back I'm just waiting for the vet to contact me about those so thanks. Bye.